We were contacted by the U.S. Marshals. They gave us a list of some of their top cases, and on the top of that list was 47-year-old Jeffrey Forrest, an alleged sexual predator wanted since 2016. You know him from his 25-year uh, run on the hit primetime show America's Most Wanted, where he helped successfully capture criminals across the world. Now John Walsh is back along with his son and co-host Callahan Walsh for the second season of their investigation discovery show In Pursuit with John Walsh. We have them both here with us in studio. Thanks for joining us. Nice to see Good you to guys see you. again. Let's yeah. clarify it, though. The people are going to want to know what happened with the hand. A little polo accident here. No, I, one of the fugitives we caught, I had to tune him up a little bit. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it took a twist. Bad, bad guy. Yeah. All right, there we go. You well, we wish you the best yes, in your recovery you there. You, you found a lot of success with the first season. Now you're back capturing fugitives, finding kidnapped kids. What keeps you going after almost three decades of this work? I am I will always be that heartbroken father of a murdered child. I hate the way that uh, we have this huge level of violence against women and children in America. We're still the number one sex trafficking of children country in the world. That's so shocking it's, to hear. It's it really creepy, is. isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we put a man on the moon of um, Mars uh, Land Rover, Mars Rover for $44 billion, and we're still the number one sex trafficking of children country in the world. We're the richest, most powerful country, and we have the most violence of any first world country. Yeah, it's the terrible. most homicides, the most mass murders, the most school shootings. It's terrible. You know, in the times that just we've had you here and we talked to you, you leave a real impression. And Callahan, I wondered, what, what is maybe the number one thing, maybe a tip or piece of advice that your dad has given you that's really helped shape who you are today? To never give up. Yeah. Never give up. Uh, I, I grew up in a, in a household that said uh, we need to make sure that Adam, my brother, who was kidnapped and murdered in 1981, that Adam didn't die in vain. And if his song is to continue, then we must do the singing. And I saw my parents do exactly that, whether it was uh, co-founding the National Center for Missing Exploited Children, an organization that's helped recover over 300,000 missing kids, or him cap capturing the bad guys, going out there every week and getting justice for families that, that uh, so deserve it. Mm -hmm. He kept battling, my mom kept battling, and uh, I, I'm honored to follow in their footsteps. Yeah, you two have done such incredible work, so thank you so much. How is this season different than the last one? Well, last season we had huge success. We caught 10 guys. First one was an FBI, I'm sorry, the first one was a U.S. Marshal's 15 most wanted top of their list looking for him for five years. Caught him in three days in Mexico. The second one was an FBI top 10 fugitive top of their list. Caught him in two days. He was living in a homeless shelter for the last three years, mm. three blocks from FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C. Wow. Walking around the streets. Unbelievable. You, so, you, well, I'm sorry. No, but we're, we're profiling the worst of the worst. I'll pick one guy, Callahan does one. He does a lot of the legwork because I spent most of his adult life or his life traveling. So, uh, and we still feature two missing children from the National Center for Missing Exploited Children where he works all during the week and then he works as my field reporter. You two, you're the best at what you do, but what is the biggest challenge you face when it comes to your job on a day-to-day -day basis? For me, it's, it's talking to the families the families of the victims. Um, you know, I have to go in and, and ask the tough questions, but it's about telling their story. It's about keeping the story of what happened alive in hopes that somebody out there has the key that unlocks that door to justice. Somebody out there knows what happened to these victims, who that criminal is, something about their whereabouts, and that's what, it, what we really have to do. We have to harness the power of the public and get them to give us those tips so we can get justice. And the hardest thing is turning down cases. Mm -hmm. America is so violent, law enforcement don't have the resources Sources. People write or text or whatever get to me and go, you're the father of a murdered child. Our case is cold. We need closure. It took 27 years for me to solve Adam's case. I mean, we actually solved our son's murder ourselves because of the bad police work and they had kept it secret and wouldn't let us have the files. So the turning down, turning down victims <clears throat> that are desperate to end that chapter of their life. So, but but the public has really taken to this show. It's a big hit on ID, and you know I thought it was time to to hang up my spurs. But you know he's done such a phenomenal job that I that we're on our second season, yeah. and, and we're we're still out there hunting for these creeps. Yeah, and a lot of a lot has changed <clears throat> since the first time you started with this work. I'm curious, how has social media altered the way that you look or capture fugitives? Has it made it easier, or maybe in a way more challenging? It it is made a lot easier when we when the internet was in, invented. 
we were always a top uh, website and one year we the first year we caught 40 guys off the website so now with social media is a big big partner with us Facebook is one of our biggest supporters, so it it spreads the word. And and as Cal knows, you can talk about pictures of missing children. Yeah, absolutely. At, at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, we know the most important tool when it comes to the recovery of a missing child is a photo of that child. It doesn't do any good if nobody sees it, though. Mm -hmm. But it's the same with our fugitives. Getting that image out there, shining a white hot spotlight on these people, making the world a lot smaller place, and harnessing the power of the public. You talked about earlier, obviously you mentioned the loss of your son, your brother Adam, in 1981, kidnapped, murdered. You solved it turning down families. For families that you can't help, and maybe they have to take it upon themselves to do something, what is your number one piece of advice for them on what to do? Go to the media. Unfortunately, in America, a lot of people have to keep their child or their loved one, their crime victim loved one, in the face of the media. It's unfortunate, but a lot of times it's up to the family and survivors and friends of the of the victim or that missing child to keep going the media. I hate to turn down people. I hate it, but you could come on your show if, sure. it, if it was somebody you knew. We're doing a case, a really tough case, that is a, is about a little girl that wound up being a babysitter for us and a friend of Callahan and the family. And she was murdered out of Las Vegas and we're mm. looking for that bad guy, but her family never gave up. Their, her family is still searching and working with us to try and the, find the murder of Lindsay Harris, who was a friend of Callahan's. Mm -hmm. you know, losing, you losing your son really fueled this career for you. When you think back, what's one memory of Adam that always kind of pops into your head? The most beautiful little boy, taught him to swim early. I loved the ocean and uh, took him all over with me and, and took him on trips, my wife and I, and we called him the little, little gentleman. And, and I used to do a lot of underwater photography and diving, and I taught him to swim, and he's a good ocean man too but he was the most wonderful, beautiful little boy. And the guy that murdered Adam was a serial predator who roamed this country for years and grabbed kids all over this country. And, and it, it, it just, not only the horrible abduction and murder of Adam, the not being able to save the case, but the anger that I had for all those years. Why don't we have a system? Why didn't we have a sex offender registry? Why wasn't it important to the FBI to look for missing children or, or stranger abducted children? All those things, and unfortunately, I've been able to testify before Congress for the last 30 years nonstop, every single state. But I, I've got to say one thing. The last year set all types of records for homicides in America. Chicago had 700 homicides plus wow. and only arrested 10 people so you have a 90 you know it's you have a high chance of getting away with murder in chicago detroit baltimore new orleans it's not like that in the rest of the first world countries we had 307 mass murders last year we had 29 school shootings there's no first world country where you send your kids to school and they get shot by other kids it's appalling the level of violence and last year it broke all kinds of records and, and I'm saying to the public we have got we all care about and you know the director of the FBI and the US Marshals director that I was talking to said you got to come out of retirement and, and help us catch these bad guys America cares about the housewives of whatever county or the Kardashians they don't want to talk about the level of violence that we're number one in sex trafficking and children and all those things and and I'm I'm trying to say to Americans you have to corner and headlock your politicians and say, shouldn't we put women and children number one? Shouldn't we talk about this level of violence? We're the richest, most powerful in the country. Right. We're, we're not Somalia. We're not Nicaragua. And you're doing great work in shedding light in just that, even today <laughs> doing this. And you did that before in America's Most Wanted, obviously a show you hosted for so long. There have been talks and reports of Fox bringing that back. If it happens, what does a host need to know to be successful in that role and taking on a show like that? A lot. The respect of law enforcement, you have to earn that. The media is not very kind to law enforcement. You have to treat the victims res with respect. In my contract, I had I will not show the face of a child if a victim's family doesn't want a certain person to come on. Mm -hmm. Or Callahan's fabulous at talking to the victims because the media is mean. They want the wife to cry, the husband to look stoic. They ask questions that are nobody's business. Have to be tenacious. It's a hard, tough job, and you see the underbelly of American society. And you have to turn people down. It, it, it's a grueling, exhausting, very, very tough, sad type of work. But every now and then you find a missing child alive.
We, it all we, in we recovered 61 missing children in America's Most Wanted. And I caught guys all over the world in 45 countries. Wow. So, but this is the guy for the job right here. Yeah. yeah. Would you be interested in hosting America's Most Wanted? Is that something you would see yourself doing? You know, we'll see. I, you know, my home is at Investigation Discovery. You know, we're doing some great work. We love working pursuit. There. It, you know, we've we've got a great track record. The the show's proven success already. Um, that's my home. That's where you know we've gotten gotten the opportunity to uh, to get back out there in the field and, and get justice for families that so deserve it. And so we're we're doing some actionable work right now, and that's what I'm proud of. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you both for yeah. everything that you're Good doing. Good to talk to you. And thank you so much for stopping by. We love when you stop by. All right, everyone, be sure to watch the season premiere of In Pursuit with John Walsh, airing Wednesday, January 15th at 10 p.m. Eastern on Investigation Discovery.